From the botched Afghanistan exit to a massive surge in COVID, Americans have had enough of his incompetence. According to a new poll, only 42 percent approve of Biden's performance, while 50 percent disapprove. And just 34 percent approve of the president's handling of foreign policy. All right, so Dana, I'll start with you. Okay. Since we never got to you in the last segment. All right. You know, he promised that he was going to make everything right. That Trump botched the he botched the COVID response, and he was going to make everything right. Now COVID's a disaster, and the numbers show it. So I think that's a, you're uh, picking up on something I was thinking about earlier today. So when he ran, he basically said, "I'm going to be a transitional person, like transitional candidate." I think kind of signaling he wouldn't necessarily run for a second term. He said, I'll, you won't have to worry about me. I'll just be the caretaker. Everything will be really smooth. No one will ever have to think about it. He didn't run on fundamentally changing the economic system of the United States. He didn't run on basically beating a hasty retreat out of Afghanistan and leaving Americans behind and green card holders and then the people that helped us uh, have no help either. In the polls that you saw in Quinnipiac poll in particular, the uh, independents are down to, I think, 32% approval. And women was then, I think, more like 47, 46. If, if I'm looking at Jessica. She looks at these polls a little bit more closely than I do. But women are really like the bread and butter for the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. So if all those numbers are going down, then you have to look at the durability of the negativity. So these numbers have been going down for a while. Polls take a little bit of time to catch up. The Afghanistan issue has been going on for about 30 days. Now you're starting to see that manifest. And even though so many in the media are helping, it doesn't seem to be improving his numbers at all. They are um, pretty bad. I also think that they're really out of touch. They seem detached. They um, haven't, he hasn't gotten out too much. He went to California to uh, campaign for Gavin Newsom, stopped in Idaho to make it an official trip to talk about wildfires. Other than that, I think that they seem pretty disconnected because people don't want this $3.5 trillion necessarily, mm -hmm. but their main concern right now for workers out there uh, is inflation because the increased cost of all their goods and services, like, even like, or like meat, for example, and gasoline and milk, Everything. that's eating up their wages. And you know, uh, Jesse, uh, the economy, Biden stands at 42% approval, while 52% disapprove of how he's handling the economy. So he'll try to tax and spend his way out of it. That's what Democrats right. do. And whenever Democrats do that, they lose big in the midterms. And if that happens and you have him with sub-45 approval and 60% of the country thinks we're going in the wrong direction, that's going to be pretty deadly. COVID's the X factor because he said we killed it this summer. Yeah. Then it came back and we're at nearly 2,000 daily deaths on average. So the problem from him is tricky because the Democrats who are largely vaxxed don't act like everything's good. They're scared of everything. They're scared of the unvaxxed. Democrats are scared of the vaxxed. They're scared of traveling. So his group of people that supports him, they're not acting like things are going back to normal. And he needs people to believe that things are going back to normal. That's why he was elected. OK, are the Democrats scared? I'm personally frightened at this moment. Just because you're sitting next to me. <laughs> I didn't say it, you said it, but now that it's out there. Um, yeah, Democrats are scared. And, and there's so much conflicting information about how you're going to get a breakthrough infection, why people are getting hospitalized, masking works, it doesn't work, et cetera. Um, but the core thing, at least that I'm focused on, is for the midterms, will the economy become untethered from the COVID question? Because Biden was able to win in 2020 because the economy was linked to what's going on with COVID. Everyone knew that the country was shut down because mm -hmm. we have this health emergency. So if by the midterms, we're largely back to normal, which is my expectation, then we'll there be a punishment against Democrats for what's going on if inflation continues to grow, mm -hmm. et cetera, versus people saying, yes, I may like how we're handling the vaccine mandate and the masking or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to Dana's point about women, I think it's a really valuable one because Democrats have a shifting coalition right now. It used to be pretty straight up that it was minority voters that were driving uh, our positive results. But then when you look at 2020, but a lot of white suburban women specifically, that's how we won states like Georgia and Arizona. And as if that begins one. to, <laughs> sorry, parenthetical. Uh, or it says scare quotes, not, par not parentheses. Um, then that obviously affects okay. 
what's going to happen. All right, so very quickly. Oh, very quickly? Okay. Yeah, very, very, okay. very, very quickly. The first time. Now, yes. surgeries. Oh, you don't have to ask me a question. I okay, just... surgeries are being canceled in hospitals in Washington. She's going to take up all the time of the question. Okay, and severe shortages of, of beds and lack of beds in Tennessee and Kentucky and L Alabama. I mean, that's real, isn't it? Yeah, it is real. I mean, he was elected to be a caretaker. Turns out he's our Undertaker. Oh, America is dying back. under Joe Biden's watch. Uh, I believe he is playing a game of crisis croquet. Is that how you say it? Croquet? That yes. little game? So he's trying to knock inflation. He's trying to knock Afghanistan. He's trying to knock crime. These are all the top balls that could get that could destroy the Democrats. He's trying to knock that off by filling it up with COVID stuff. I don't think the COVID stuff would affect him as much as crime, homelessness, education, Afghanistan, and especially your point, inflation, because that's where it hurts everybody across the board, especially uh, the blue collar worker. So I think that right now they're benefiting from anything from COVID because they've got so many other problems. I also want to make a comparison to Trump's numbers. Uh, you could say that in, in the in polling that Trump's numbers were similar at this point, but it's a false comparison because Trump numbers were uh, were actually amazingly good given the relentless vomit of fake news and smoking gun stories and general emotional hysteria. Biden's numbers aren't about his personality. They're about his incompetence. Yeah. And he was supposed to be the competent. We knew what Trump was. We knew what the package was. We saw him in The Apprentice. But we were promised a caretaker. We yeah. got, like, Dr. Death. Yeah, no, we got someone that we have to take care of. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.